Hello, I'm Abby X Toy Cat, and sometimes it's easier to believe a lie than the truth, which is why there are so many myths which still do exist, but that's something I want to bust today, because this is Minecraft Mythbusters, the second edition, and let's start with one of the biggest ones that came out after 1.21, which is that you can use the Volk's rewards uh, and actually pick them yourself by using the Volk key at just the right time. This is a very logical myth to come about, because you can see a preview of what you can get, and obviously when you do put in a key, you'll see exactly what you do get for a second in there before it comes out, and you might think that these two events are perfectly linked, but if I show you of an ominous vault and I try to get a nice rare piece of loot, you'll notice that every single item in here will show for a second before changing to the next one, except when I want that enchanted book, at which point it instantly changes. This is because the loot that you get after you put the key in is always going to be different than the loot you're seeing before, unless there is a rare circumstance where they perfectly line up, but there is no link between the two events, and that is why if I try to specifically aim for diamonds, I'm going to get arrows. If I specifically try to go for arrows, I'm going to get a, uh, what is that, an armor trim, and as a result, uh, there is no way to time it, because there's just two unlinked events, which feel so perfectly linked, and it's sad that they're not, it'd be cool if there was some skill to it, but it is going to be based on the seed in the future, and so I hope that that helps people understand that sadly, this is just a preview of what you can get, and not what actually is inside. I think a locked chest would probably have a similar feel, but help people understand this just a little bit better, but this is a cool thing of the vault. Speaking of cool things of the vault, an additional myth is that you can get wind burst and uh, levels higher than one but no you have to use an anvil if you want any of the other levels speaking of other levels you might be wondering at this point oh that's funny uh, you might be wondering at this point what is that noise playing for and it's to bust the myth that allies are useless a lot of people like to rag on this guy as just another useless mob boat mob and honestly there are a lot of places where you know like it, it requires a very specific set of needs and that usually can be uh, that you've got a <laughs> look at him he's just uh, going free right here uh, but you can see that if you don't have a note block set up for him then yeah he might be useless and might not be doing very much, but you can use him for an auto farm where every time he sees a wheat, he drops it down right here onto a hopper, saving us a hopper minecart. And this is all possible just by simply having a note block over here. If we break the note block, we break the alley too, but I think it's a really, really useful thing to know about that if you just use a note block and an alley, you can make menial tasks so much easier. Here's another great example. If we have an alley and we have a tree, the most menial, boring part of it is collecting the saplings when we're done, but the alley can do that for us, which means that once we chop this down, we can leave the tree to its own devices, it will slowly disintegrate and the alley will make sure I don't miss any saplings, if that's what I want, because I want furnace fuel or something, and look at that, he's putting them right by this chest over here, isn't that incredible? You can also use alleys to do sorters, which I think is very fun, and you can also um, use alleys as a way to uh, help you understand why the third myth is in fact not true, so just as a fun thing here, by the way, I, I think alleys are a great pet by the way, there's so many great things you can say about them, they're super cute, they're super reliable, and they won't leave you and, and take the kids with them, but you know who else won't take the kids with them? An ominous trial, especially the Breeze. The Breeze is definitely a deadbeat dad if a Minecraft mob ever was, and one of the interesting things about the Breeze is that people will say it's the hardest mob in the trial chamber, but it dies so easily, and so really the trial chambers aren't challenging, but these people have probably just had a really easy trial chamber with just one or two spawners. Those people forget about the challenge that can come with a stray. I think that these are nightmarish without smite on, the, uh, on your sword, but even crazier than this is the fact that there is one mob that everyone should fear that you forget about when you've forgotten about this guy for long enough. It's like, oh, it's not too bad, but ominous zo baby zombie spawners will have baby zombies spawning with armor and swords, and they charge at you in a way that is just nightmarish. This is the very same mob that has led to one of the most famous hardcore deaths out there, and c consider that you've got to fight these guys, not just by themselves like I am, where I'm basically dead, by the way, as a result. You've got to fight these guys, not- oh, he got me. <laughs> But you've got to do so with breezes and skeletons sometimes at the exact same time. And that is what makes the trial chambers so dangerous. Lots of different mobs at the same time. And it's interesting because people think the trial chambers are slightly too uh, easy in a way. But a lot of people overthink how hard the ancient city is, thinking that it's a late game structure. So here's something fun, by the way. Here is uh, my teleportation method to show you an ancient city. This zombie dies and now I can be in a <laughs> ancient city. Wow, the power of redstone. But um, this is a really, really, really dangerous structure, but it's really easy to avoid it. You literally just have to crouch, and it means that this is actually the perfect early game structure. You can get really, really cool late game loot, and you can get it um, within the early game, and honestly, if you come here too late, it's only really useful for Swift Sneak, but in the early days, you can get great armor, you can get great tools and potions, and the sorts of stuff that you won't get until much later. So if you see one of these and you think, I'll have to come back later, no, just go in there. Just be very careful to crouch and maybe have an escape plan planned. Uh, by the way, speaking 
speaking of fun things, uh, have you ever noticed there's a bunch of uh, dark oak around an ancient city? A fun fact about this is this is uh, an implication that villagers or pillagers have come here at some point and started building on top of it. So the ancient cities have multiple layers of history. That's just a law fact. It has nothing to do with myth busting. I just think it's really cool. Speaking of really cool, let's move on to the next myth. Did you know um, that a lot of people will say that Minecraft is easy? Far too many, in fact. And I think this is a dumb myth. And let me uh, prove to you why this is by jumping into the never... I think people forget how challenging the nether is in general, especially on bedrock without faster regen, but I also think especially people forget the challenge of a bastion remnant. People will say, oh no, they're actually really easy, just wear some gold armor, but no, here's the challenge. There is a type of piglin, the piglin brute, who will attack you regardless of your gold armor, and the moment that you attack him back, you know, he's angry with you and the other piglins aren't, but when you attack him back, that makes every other piglin in this place super, super mad of you like this guy, and even more crazy is the fact that if you have a shield, you can't avoid the pain that way, meaning you have a structure filled with so many dudes in such a small space that it's often enclosed, and you have to then, uh, you know, the, the point of coming here is to get the Neverite upgrades, so you have to open chests, and that makes them all mad too. There is no way to avoid the pain, uh, there is just so much of it, and everyone who actually plays a decent amount of Bedrock Survival agrees with me that the Bastion Remnant is the most challenging uh, structure, and if you don't agree, you probably just haven't been to one in a while. The trial chambers are pretty bad, especially ominous trials, by the way. I, I think even when you have a ominous, uh, a, a, si a simple silverfish spawner, um, this combined with some ominous effects can go pretty damn crazy, and it's something that a lot of people don't appreciate. Speaking of not appreciating, one of the biggest myths, it has to be said, Minecraft's hardest game mode um, it obviously can make your game harder, uh, but a lot of people think that Hardcore is in Bedrock right now. Fun fact, it's still only in previews. They're waiting to fix all of the death bugs. Something important you need to know. Something else important that I think you need to know is that there are other challenging aspects of Minecraft. You can always speed run if you think that the base game is too hard, uh, too easy. You can always do it PvP. You can get into other parts of the game. And even if you try those things, just like me, you might die in one hit to a creeper if there's no glass between you and it. In which case, you'll be fine and you'll be free to explore the final uh, big myth because here's the deal. The level of an ominous bottle does not determine the difficulty of an ominous trial. This is sad because it feels like it should be true, but let me show you. This is an ominous bottle level one, right? And let me use... Uh, let let me use my Bane of Arpod sword to take down all of these spiders nice and easy. If you count the number of spiders we killed, it is six. But then if we go in with an Ominous Bottle level five on this one, bad omen five that is, um, and we try the exact same by resetting our trial spawner cooldown, um, then something interesting will happen, and that is we'll have to kill one and two and three and four and five and six. There is no difference um, between an Ominous level five and Ominous level one, and there is a only one tiny bit of mistruth to that, and that is if you play on Java, and you go to a raid, technically there is a very slight difference only on the Java edition. Most people who think that there is are playing Bedrock, where there is still none. This is a parity difference they need to fix, admittedly. Look at this effect I've got. It's very nice. Um, <laughs> I, I, I guess it's the wind charge effect that I uh, got from an ominous spawner. Um, but yeah, I think it's very interesting that people think uh, that it is uh, that way on Bedrock when it just isn't. Speaking of things that just isn't, let's go for a final little wave of bonus myths. Um, so first one's first. Um, Sugarcane grows faster on sand. Uh, as the king of sugarcane, uh, I believe this is the title I've been given, a lot of people will say this to me, like, why are you making a sugarcane farm out dirt? And the reason that I think it's true, that these will grow at the exact same pace, by the way, the reason I think people think this is true is because when you go to a desert, you'll see a lot of sugarcane there, and that would explain that you think you, you see some four high sugarcane, and you say, wow, it must grow so much faster because there's more of it here. It makes thematically some sense, but it's not true, and Minecraft doesn't check what block is below sugarcane when it's growing, so there's no way for it to be true. Speaking of there's no way for things to be true, the modified jungle edge biome is not the rarest biome in Minecraft. Um, a lot of people say that it is because it used to be, uh, but the sparse jungle, the remake of it, is actually pretty common. So if you think that you found the rarest biome in Minecraft, I'm sorry to poop on your parade, but that's the point of this video, is sharing information, even if it's not necessarily the most fun, but hopefully makes uh, your decisions more accurate. Speaking of being more accurate, do you like this uh, clock, by the way? It allows us to switch rooms from day to night, but also it allows us to show you that phantoms will not... Uh, you, okay, you know, I'm just going to kill you all now. I'm sorry, you've annoyed me too much. Um, so phantoms uh, are, will prevent you from, uh, will actually spawn unless you sleep, and the only way to stop it is to sleep through the entire night. Nope, you just need to get in the bed. This resets your insomnia timer. This is not how the real world works. Fun fact, if you sleep for five minutes, uh, you're going to be a lot more tired, but in Minecraft, phantoms don't know, they don't care, and so you don't need to worry about it. Speaking of don't need to worry, mycelium does not prevent monsters from spawning. It is the mushroom fields biome itself, and so sadly, if you bring the mycelium outside the biome, you won't get these mushrooms. It's the biome and not the block 
which is very interesting. I think a lot of people will agree. And finally, bundles are useless. This is a skill issue, as Kambi puts it. Uh, the bundle will help a lot with the early game, as you tend to pick up a lot of different stuff. And so just during the course of this video, I would be able to bundle together my cocoa beans, my slime balls, my bread, my string, my spider eyes, and not have to give up all these inventory slots for them. It's actually really great to have a bundle, especially in the early game, when you're going and exploring a bunch of different biomes, and that is why you shouldn't dismiss it just yet. Speaking of things you shouldn't dismiss, I hope you don't dismiss this video, um, because it has been a great time to make. I really do enjoy sharing these little things about Minecraft that are important for everyone to know, uh, but aren't that widely shared. Oh, by the way, do you see that? It, would, it all grew basically at the same time. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do want to say that we have one last thing to go into, and that is the fact that I want to thank KMB for helping me to put together this video. Uh, he did a very good job on this world, I think you'll all agree. And I also want to thank all of you for watching and considering to subscribe so that you can be more informed. I know it's more fun to know a lie than the truth sometimes, but hopefully in this video, we fix that somewhat. So this is the end. I've been IBX Toycat, and I hope you enjoy this video because I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Oh, that's weird.